Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. My name is Paola and today I have Claire Contreras who is a returning guest. Claire, say hello. Hi, I'm so glad to be here again. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> and today we're here for the Rule Breaker. So uh, Claire, tell us a little bit about that book. So The Rule Breaker is a college romance. Um, the hero is a hockey player. Um, he's Dominican, which you don't see a lot of Dominican hockey players. So I was like, it has to be done. Main, the other main character is his best friend and she plays soccer for the same school. And then they start living together as friends with another friend of theirs and they fall in love. Actually, best friends to lovers romance is one of my favorite tropes to to read uh, but what about you is there a particular trope that you gravitate towards I really like enemies to lovers and I really like second chance romance I feel like those are probably the the, the ones that I really really enjoy the most or like age gap I don't know like I like the forbidden thing too I like age gaps too oh very hot very hot tropes <laughs> yeah <laughs> so you mentioned that this is a uh, college set romance and you have another series also set in college that one is the half truth secret society secret society um, and I love them I love your university settings I think they're very like engrossing and you can really feel the college vibe and you're you know attending the college um, so what is the world building process like well for the secret society series I had a college in mind and I feel like I really just used, I guess, the aesthetics of that college, that university, which is Cornell University in Ithaca, New York. But it was, it's fun because I love college. I love that atmosphere. Like, you know, it's very much like you're free to do so much. Like you finally have freedom and you meet people that are like-minded. And so in the Secret Society series, obviously there's secret societies. So you meet these people who are, you know, like-minded and have like similar backgrounds or in Twisted Circles, completely different backgrounds, the two here, the two main characters. In this college series, which is The Heartbreaker, The Rule Breaker, and The Troublemaker, it's set in a college in North Carolina. And that was cool because I we actually went there. When we first moved here, we took a trip over there. And then we took another trip for a college football game. And the environment was so cool because everybody was like partying and you just feel like the college atmosphere and you feel the rivalries between the universities that are like not even 10 minutes away from each other. Um, so I really wanted to bring that into this series. That's so cool. And also university in the U.S. is very different from university in Mexico. So I love reading that um, and comparing it to my own college experience, which is very not <laughs> like the ones that I read about. So what about those vibes and those experiences are based on your own college experience and what is like completely made up? I went to university in Miami and I lived like 10 minutes away from it. So I lived at home. So I didn't get the college experience that I saw like at UNC or Cornell or like things like that. Like I didn't get that because I didn't go away. Um, so I feel like for me, it was probably very similar to, to what you had, because it was like, you know, I'm at home with my parents and I go out when I want to, but it's not, I'm not living there. I'm not like immersed in this thing. So a lot of it is made up or like at least what I saw from people I knew who lived in Miami, but were not from Miami. So hanging out with them and going to like frat parties and things like that, like you do get the experience, but it's not, you know, you still go home and you have your parents there. <laughs> so you are a self-published author. Um, so what are some of the unexpected challenges that you've faced? It's a lot. <laughs> um, there, there, are, there are a lot of challenges. I feel like there's more challenges than there are good things, but somehow I keep publishing. I don't know. So Everything from like the cover, the co like picking what goes on the cover, the cover design, getting a cover designer who's in the same on the same page as you and willing to like experiment, at, at least for like my gothic romance or my secret society. Like those are covers that are very abstract and different and not all cover designers want to do that necessarily. So I work with a Kong Lee and I lucked out with her because she is always willing to like experiment with something 
different. But then also like editors and proofreaders and beta readers. And, you know, these are people you have to pay to like, again, they're providing service and you have to pay for all of these things. So it's very expensive to self-publish a book to begin with. And then if you start adding on things like audiobooks, if you want to self-publish an audiobook, that's another expense and a big one. So it's just like, there are so many things. And then on everyday life, it's like, I wish I could just sit here and write my books every single day. Like just write. If I could get up and just write and then go to sleep and then wake up and just write, that would be a dream. But unfortunately, or fortunately, I have to think of like all the business stuff and the marketing and the advertisement and setting up ads it's very exhausting (laughs) it's very very mentally draining which is why I can't release a book all the time like I've been trying and like with this series I'm trying to do like one month only in between them so that I can get these three fun books out there like for the summer type of thing and then once I was in it and I had to do the releases I was like oh my goodness like I'm waving over my head I'm one person and I'm a mom and I'm a wife and uh, you know it's just a lot so So yeah, that's the cons of it or, you know, or pros. It depends how you look at it because obviously the pros of it is that, you know, you have control over everything you do. Yeah. I mean, I can only imagine how, how exhausting it can be. Have you ever tried to get like traditionally published or getting an agent? I have always had an agent, but the agents I've had in the past have had a lot of self-published authors signed to that. And in the very, very beginning, I was never, I never intended to self-publish. I wanted to go traditional because that's all I knew, but I started self-publishing and I just, I loved the control of it and the idea that I could publish whatever book I wanted, whenever I wanted, but I always had it in the back of my mind. Like I still want to go traditional. I still want to go traditional because it's something that I need to do like for myself. I need to do it. So anyways, all of my agents were had mostly self-published authors and I think agents kind of shifted in the sense that because all of the people were self-published they understood that their authors didn't want a traditional deal their authors wanted if anything a traditional deal in the foreign rights basically all of my previous agents that's what they've done is sell my books you know, in other places, Italy, Spain, you know, wherever, which is amazing. I mean, that's, it's amazing that they could do that. And that's for the most part, a lot of the ones I know of are really, really, really big in the international market because that's all they do now, or not all they do, but for the most part, that's all they do. I have another agent now, and this agent is primarily traditional and, or she does hybrid. So I definitely am in the planning to shop something traditional, hopefully, soon I just need to I need to finish my indie stuff and then that's all I'm focusing on because I this needs to work for me like I need to go traditional or hybrid somehow I love that you also talked about how you are a wife and a mother so how do you balance that with with your career as an author I feel like the word balance kind of insinuates that I'm like zen all the time (laughs) you know (laughs) and like everything just works and I don't know that there is a balance. I feel like something is always lacking. So I don't know that there is a balance. I feel like you try your best. And like for me, I drop off my kids at school. And from the time, the whole time they're at school, I am writing or working on something, you know, marketing, advertising, whatever I need to do during those hours. And a lot of times that means I do it during those hours and then I stop when I pick them up and do homework and cook and do everything else and then start again at night because that's what I have to do. So I don't know if there's a balance, but it's kind of a balance and it works, you know, but my books don't get as much attention as I wish they did, (laughs) for sure. Like I don't, I don't write as much as I wish I could, for sure. Interesting. That's a very interesting way to to interpret the the word balance, because yeah, it's true. Sometimes we, you know, as the audience, as the person who does not see how much work goes into making a book, we can see that, oh, wow, Claire is a magician. She does this and she does that. And it's great, but it's not, oh, snap, I forgot the expression. In Spanish, it's called, it's not all um, miel sobre hojuelas. Like, it's just not that easy. Exactly. It's not, it's not, it's definitely not easy for sure. But it's also like, I'm not going to stop writing and I'm not going to stop yeah. being a mother or a wife. So <laughs> you just, you just yeah. have to figure it out, honestly, and not feel guilty over not doing everything. Because yeah, 
I, th I think women especially we put so much pressure on ourselves like we have to do everything and you can you can't do everything it's impossible to do everything so you just have to pick your battles like what are you yeah. going to do on that same note uh what's one piece of of advice that you'd give to self-published authors so there are certain things that you need to absolutely pay for like an editor you absolutely need to pay for an editor a cover you need to pay for a cover um so basically they don't half ass everything because the thing is that you work so hard to write that book and if it takes you a little bit longer because you can't afford these things right now then you might as well wait let it take you a little bit longer but get a good cover get a good editor take your time is the yeah. best advice that i can give anybody is so this is the rapid fire section are you a plotter or a pantser pantser but i want to be a plotter <laughs> <laughs> paperback or hardback paperback <laughs> a book you want everyone to read I'll just go with The Nightingale by Kristen Hanna. But also The Rule Breaker by Claire Contreras. But also The Rule Breaker, <laughs> right. <laughs> All of mine, but also that one. I, I never, like, it's fun. I seriously can talk about other people's books for hours. And then mine, I'm like, oh, yeah, just read it. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> uh, should books be judged by their covers? No, absolutely not. <laughs> uh, what's your purpose in life? I think it is to teach my kids, especially, to be better people and kind people and to be a kind person myself and to hopefully tell women that it's okay to be yourself and to love yourself and to accept yourself because again we go through so much and take so many hits and and nobody tells us like you you're amazing you're good like you just need to love yourself and trust in yourself and that's it <laughs> and be uh -huh. happy I love that. That's really, that's a really good purpose in life. Yeah, I mean. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so are there any upcoming projects that we should be excited about? Um, I have The, the Troublemaker um, <laughs> coming out soon. That's the one I need to finish. So I have that one and I have the third one in the Secret Society series, hopefully this fall. That's, that's exciting. It. That's yeah, very, I'm very excited. exciting. I will leave links down below so that you can support Claire, sign up to her newsletter, be part of her Facebook group, follow her on Instagram, Twitter, all that good stuff. Also links below for the Rule Breaker and the Heartbreaker. Don't forget to check all of her stuff out because she's like a great author, trust me. Thank you, Claire, so much for being here. I love talking to you. Love spending time with you. Everybody else, thank you for watching and we'll see you in another one. Bye. Thank you so much. Bye. Thank you.